in this video, we'll focus on placing Riba on multiple beams using the Powerpack Detailing plugin. We'll be detailing the foundation plinth beams with specifications from the structural drawing available in the description for download. Foundation plinth beams play a critical role in providing stability and support to structures. In Revit 2024, Detailing these beams is made easier with the help of specialized tools and plugins. You can watch the previous videos to see how to detail footings and columns using the plugin. Let's get started. In this plan view, I imported a PDF file containing the structural drawings. The beam section has the reinforcement design details as you can see. The top set should be 2x12. The stirrup type is Y8 at 250mm spacing. Three bars are required at the bottom with Y12 type. We can go to 3D view to proceed with that in mind. I will select this beam, then go to its properties. The plinth beam is 250 by 450 millimeters. I will switch to the power pack detailing plugin tab. We have a range of tools for creating and editing reinforcements. We can start by creating a group for the beams first. Click on create group, then select multi-span beam. I will select the beams, one by one, from this side up to the last beam in this direction. The selected beams should be connected or form a straight line and at the same level. Click on finish to complete the selection. In this dialog, we can set the name to PB-1 for plinth beam. Then press OK. The beams are now grouped. In the design status, we can expand here to view the grouped elements. Click to collapse or expand, then hit close to exit. Grouping beams makes it easier to manage and apply consistent detailing across multiple elements. Next, we can define some reinforcement assumptions for our beams. Select any beam in the group, then hit finish. This step is crucial for ensuring that the plugin generates the ribas according to our project requirements. You can enable or disable automatic update for bar parameters from here. You can set as required for your project. I will uncheck beams monolithic with its support. We can edit the ribas afterwards. I will proceed to transversal bars to edit the stirrups. Here. We can uncheck automatic definition under shape, then set enclosed links to none. Uncheck under diameter to change the type to Y8 as given in the drawing. In spacing, we can choose uniform spacing, then type the spacing value of 250. In spacing compensation, select on the last method. We can proceed to define the reinforcement assumptions. In additional settings, you can provide links at beam support junction by activating from here. We can go to assembly bus settings. You can choose to set as required in your project. The preview can be viewed above. For anti-crack bars, you can watch the next video on beams to see how to utilize it in detailing. In additional settings, set type to none here. There are options for splice bars, sliding and strut bars, and continuity bus settings. I will proceed to anchorage. Angles of the ends can be modified here for both bottom or top bars. I will set both as 90. You can check the impose hook length to use the minimum hook length. It will be calculated by multiplying the diameter by 12. I will enable automatic concrete cover adjustment. We can continue to define other settings in the list. At edge supports, I will use the selected hook settings, then select impose anchorage type with lapped bars. In bars splitting, we can define our ribber length and splitting method. Check the maximum stock bar length, then set the length available in your region. I will change to 10,000. Check split bars, then choose the method from here. I will choose bars lapping. I will leave lapping as diameter dependent with the diameter multiplier of 50. I will leave the other settings as they are, then click on bar constraints. You can set constraints from here for the defined conditions in the list to set number of bars, layers, 
maximum diameters and multiple links. I will proceed to special features. All beams can be located here for each span. Select special features heading then start by applying material strengths for all spans. In concrete covers, I will set all to 20 mm. The ribbons generated will adjust to these cover settings. We can proceed to define the longitudinal reinforcement settings. We can check and set number of bars per layer to 2. I will check number of top layer and leave it as 1. For diameter of top bars, I will change to Y12. I will activate the bottom layer then set the bars to Y12. We can leave these two settings as unchecked. In transversal, I will check enclosed links then set to none. Now, all our beams have the same settings in the special features tab. With our assumptions defined, we can proceed to continue by pressing OK. To generate reinforcements, select on constructive dispositions command, then select any beam in the group then hit finish. Press yes to continue. Press close here. As you can see, the plugin has analyzed the structural context of our beams and intelligently placed ribbons according to the industry standards and best practices. You can select on any set, then edit the layout and spacing from the ribbon set options. If I select on the longitudinal bars, note that they have been split at supporting columns at each span ends. This bar starts here, up to this end. In this other span, the bar starts from this column to this other column here. This is the default settings for all the beams in the multi-span beam group. You can see this set starts and ends at the supporting columns too. Once the ribbons are generated, it is essential to review and fine-tune them as needed. Select on main bars command to modify the generated reinforcements. Then select any beam in the beam group. We can proceed to editing the ribbons starting from the bottom bars. Select on the heading to edit all spans, then set the quantity to 3 as defined in the structural drawings. The type is Y12 which is ok. You can adjust the left and right offsets from here. We can proceed to the top bars by selecting on top longitudinal option. I will leave quantity as 2 here. I will select on the top bars. In this list, I will expand each support to reveal the layers of all supports. If you want to use the maximum balance in the beam, we can delete all these extra bars first. With all the layers visible, I will delete them all using the red X sign found beside layer 1. We will let the program detail the bars with lapping using the maximum bar length defined in the assumptions. In the transversal bars tab, we have the stirrup settings which is defined as per the structural drawings. We can continue to set the automatic lapping by activating the command in the top and bottom ribbers. In the top ribbers, select on span 1, then activate continuous across the entire beam option. Check the box beside to enable this option for the top ribbers. Now, these ribbers will have a length of up to 10 meters as defined in the assumptions bar splitting settings. Go to the bottom ribbers. Then select span 1 and check the continuous across the entire beam option. We can press OK to update the ribbons within our model. As you can see, our ribbons are now set to the new settings from the main bus command. If we now select on a ribber set, the ribber set extend up to the stock length defined in the reinforcement assumptions bus splitting settings. Lapping has automatically been placed with the defined parameter of 50 times the diameter. The bottom ribber set are now 3 bars in quantity as defined. Whether it's adjusting bar length, adding additional reinforcement, or optimizing placement, Greatec empowers us to achieve the perfect detailing for our beams. At the far ends of the span, hooks have been applied with the defined parameters. You can edit the ribbers by using the main bars command for any element design within the plugin. I can set to the back view, then zoom to view the bars. Now, the beams have been connected to the columns in the existing structure. And there you have it. With Greatec Powerpack detailing, detailing beams has never been easier. 
from selecting beams to defining reinforcement assumptions and generating ribbers, Gratex streamlines the entire process, saving us time and ensuring structural accuracy. Stay tuned for more tutorials as we continue to explore the endless possibilities of Revit with Gratex Power Pack Detailing. Thank you for joining me in this tutorial. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more content. If you have questions or suggestions for future tutorials, drop them in the comments below. Until next time, happy detailing.